What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to DVDs, Nuts, and Popcorn. I am your host, the PWM, the Physical Media Mac, and I am back with another collection video in the car. Only PWM does collection videos in his car. I know it's kind of weird. It baffles even a genius's mind. But this is how we do it. Now, I got probably six boxes of DVDs. This is my non-horror 2023 DVD collection, guys. Lots of great action films, sci-fi, even a few comedies here and there. We're going to rip through them. Try to get this done in an hour and a half. That's the plan. This will be uh, replacing my Goodwill hunting video this week that I normally post on Sundays. And we will return to that format, hopefully next Sunday. So let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please. Unfortunately, I did get uh, lazy again. This is not in alphabetical order. It actually hurts me in the long run because I can't go back to these videos and watch them when I'm sitting at Goodwill and I'm wondering, do I have this movie or not? All right, let's go ahead and get started on this. I mean, I came up on this, but I never was really into earnest films. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. And we have a, uh, a triple pack here. Or as they like to say, a triple feature. And it's got Ernest Goes to Camp, Ernest Scared Stupid, and then Ernest Goes to Jail. And I'm kind of surprised that I've never really... I mean, I just, I don't know, like, coming up, I felt like Ernest was kind of a dork. And I didn't find him funny. Maybe I'm missing something. I think I need to go through these. Uh, we're coming up on, uh, it'll be October before we know it. And what I'm going to do this year for Halloween, or the Halloween month, I'm going to watch Ernest Scared Stupid. And then if I enjoy that, then I'll uh, check out the other films. Cool little triple pack there. All right. Again, in no particular order here. Let me see if I can have some semblance of uh, organization. Now, shout out to my Canadians out there. This is one of my favorite series, television series. And I really can't compare it to anything here in America. It's super unique. And I'm surprised there's not like a ton of these trailer park, you know, similar type of uh, television series out here. And that's Trailer Park Boys. Now, I am the physical media mat, guys, but I do stream every once in a while. And I streamed the living F out of every single trailer park episode over the, uh, the pandemic during the time that I was out of work. I watched every single one of them, and I absolutely fell in love with them. All three of those guys, man, are so friggin' badass. And uh, what is this? The complete fifth season? The complete third season? The complete fourth season? And then we have uh, Countdown to Liquor Day. That was this is actually a uh, was a movie. I think they had a couple of films. But anyway, that's my uh, trailer park collection so far. If you have not seen this series, you have to check it out, guys. I'm sure it's on Netflix or Amazon Prime. It is so funny, and uh, holy shit, man! How do I even explain it? This nerdy guy, you've probably seen him before in the middle is so badass this guy right here is so basically they sell weed 
these two guys sell weed in the trailer park and uh this is their buddy right here but he's like a you know he doesn't sell he's, he's tries to be a good guy and stuff but he's hanging around these losers and uh this guy's in and out of jail i won't go too much into it because we don't have time but man it is really freaking hilarious all right next up here shout out to Artie lang who was such a staple of the howard stern show for so long but drugs got the best of them um this is actually something that i've seen recently well in the last year or so and a cool flick right here beer league it's got our boy from uh karate kid ralph macho in it he's great in it man i like him in other movies besides uh besides karate kid yeah good shit man great alcohol movie there's some funny uh is it a prostitute or a stripper? There's some funny stripper scenes. Lots of drugs and stuff. It's just a uh, a really good movie. What else can I say? All right, we have uh, the Road Trip series here. And, uh, you know, you have the original Road Trip, which I feel like is kind of a comedy classic with our boy. Why am I going to forget his name? Oh, God, the print is terrible on this. Tom Green. So Tom Green, who stars in the first road trip. And then we have the second one, which is Road Trip Beer Pong. I think that one came second. I'm not sure. Maybe Euro Trip did. But I have not seen Euro Trip yet. But I did see Beer Pong. And I thought it was pretty funny. So now I need to check out Euro Trip. It's called the Triple D Collection. Yeah, man, good funny shit. All right, it looks like we're doing comedies here. We got a lot of comedies. Oh, these aren't all comedies. All right, so this is a four film pack here. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think I saw uh, Caught Up with uh, Bokeem Woodbine. But I've not seen Fat Beach, I've not seen Foolish, and I have not seen Hot Boys. Hot Boys and Foolish are Master P vehicles. I think I've seen an interview with um, with Eddie Griffin here where he was talking about Master P. It might have been on Vlad Television where he was talking about Master P and uh, he met up with Master P and... I think Master P said, name how much, you know, you want for a script and to star in the movie. And they came to the figure of $1 million. And Master P wrote him a check for $1 million on the spot. And the script was not even finished. Uh, Eddie Griffin went home, wrote the script, and uh, the rest is history. So pretty crazy. He got paid a $1 million dollars by Master P for that film. I'm pretty sure I got that story straight. And I'm noticing that Fat Beach has Coolio in it. I might need to check that out. It might be funny. And Hot Boys is probably terrible, I'm sure. I do like my Christmas films, and I grew up watching the cartoon Richie Rich. So pretty cool that they, there's a Richie Rich movie. And then we have uh, Jack Frost, Dennis the Menace Christmas, and the Nutcracker. It's a pretty cool shit right there. I keep covering movies with my giant fingers. All right, double feature here. Let's take a sip of my coffee. Now, guys, I grew up on this shit, man. I, you know, who does not love Cheech and Chong? If you do not love Cheech and Chong, you should be deported from this country right now. See, I did the kind of the reverse reverse joke there. But anyway, yeah, man, I love Cheech and Chong. The ultimate pothead movies. So funny, man. They are just so good together. So in this one, we have Cheech and Chong's next movie. And we have... Born in the East L.A. 
They must have made like 30 movies together. I can't think of a bad one. I love everything that they're in. All right, now, where are we at? A lot of multi-packs here, guys. We have four film collection, or it's the Ice Cube collection. Let me take this sticker off of here. We got the classic Friday, top five hood movies of all time. Then we have about the all about the Benjamins. And of course, Mike Epps was in Friday too. And then we have Friday After Next. Mike Epps is in that as well. And then, uh, yeah, Friday 2 is right there. The next Friday. I liked all the Friday films, man. I thought they were all funny. I mean, none of them, you know, they all pale in comparison to the first one, but I still think they're, they're funny, funny flicks. All about the Benjamins? I really don't remember that one. All right, let's get rolling through this. All right, I'm probably going to have a shelf in my third bedroom, or I'm going to build shelves in there. I'm well, not building shelves. I'm buying shelves. And I'm going to have what's called a nostalgic section, which is all movies that I grew up on. And this is definitely one of them. Johnny Be Good. I remember this being a good flick. Anthony Michael Hall, Robert Downey Jr., and a very young Uma Thurman. Probably the first time I've ever seen her in a film. It doesn't get any more classic than this. I mean, this is, besides, I mean, Lost Boys, what is a better film than uh, that has Corey Ham and Corey Feldman teaming up? Absolute classic. Love the red case, by the way. So funny, man. A wild, non-stop, uh, free-willing adventure. Kevin Thomas, Los Angeles Times. Some guys get all the, some guys get all the breaks. But yeah, this is all about Corey Ham's character getting his driver's license, and I think he fails the driver his driver's license test, and he's just heartbroken over it. But he still ends up like taking, I think he takes his dad's car out because he wants to impress this beautiful chick. And uh, then they get in all kinds of trouble, man, with the police and people chasing them. And yeah, man, this is a really good movie. All right, this is still factory sealed here. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of, what is this guy's name? Why am I thinking Seth Rogen? Is it Seth Rogen? I think it is. Seth Rogen. He's in all of these. I'm not a huge fan of his. I have never seen the interview, which I think was highly controversial, right? Uh, what's the guy Rodman went to see in China? Something, the crazy uh, dictator. I can't think of his name now. Let me see. Oh, Kim Jong-un. But anyway, uh, have not seen that one. I did see One Night Before. I thought that was pretty funny. It's a Christmas comedy. Pineapple Express. Is that as good as Cheech and Chong? Some of the Cheech and Chong stuff? I don't think so, but it's kind of the next generation of that, so to say. And it was pretty damn good. And uh, you got an end of the world, like apocalypse uh movie called This Is The End, which I'm a big fan of this movie. Really good shit right here. The world ends. I don't know if it's a meteor, meteorite hits the world or something, but these guys are all trapped in this house, and they have tons of drugs and guns, and they're getting high, and it's really funny, man. I love it, man. Good shit. It's got some of the guys from... Uh, it's got the black guy from uh, Hot Tub Time Machine. And, um, of course, it has Seth Rogen in it. But it's also got the, um, what's the other guy's name? I'll never find it. Let me see. No, nah, I won't be able to read it. 
this guy right here. He was in that baseball down and out, something down and out, that baseball uh, TV series. All right. I don't know why I got a Blu-ray. All right, now. All right, let's put this back in the box. Try to have some kind of organization going down here. I don't know what I'm thinking, down and out. Down and out, is that what it is? Something, I don't know. It's a really funny, uh, funny series. I think I bought this to give this away in manual because I have two copies of this. Uh, this one's not open. And this is about the uh, kid. I say kid. He's probably like 17 years old, something like that. And, uh, oh, no, he was 21 years old. A white supremacist. And uh, what was his name? Was it Dylan? I think it was Dylan something or another. National headlines blazed the uh, story. Churchgoers gunned down during prayer service in Charleston, South Carolina after a 21-year-old white supremacist opened fire in Emmanuel African Methodist uh, 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 well, whatever, church. Um, nine African Americans lay dead, leaving their families and members to grapple with the senseless act of terror um, featuring intimate interviews with the survivors and family members Emmanuel from executive producers uh, I'm getting too much into this Dylan something or another I can't remember the guy's name but anyway um, really powerful shit man so young guy they, 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 they had a camera outside so he gets out of the car opens the, the front door uh, a church session is going on sits in the back quietly and then pulls out a gun and cowardlessly shoots people like in the back and uh like it said killed nine i think nine people um i don't know if he was ever in court with all the family members and stuff but he was like via um you know video they could see him like on a tv screen in court and um each and every family member, when they got up to speak, uh, amazingly forgave him. And it was so powerful that it really took the, 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 uh, the, the supremacist uh, mentality. It took the, uh, however great he felt about what he did, it kind of, it kind of, uh, it, it defeated him basically. Because they were such forgiving and wonderful people. Uh, yeah, really powerful shit. And I think in the funerals, they uh, they let these um, these white doves go and fly away. And it's supposed to be the souls of the children. Man, really powerful, man. I, I don't know what else to say about that. All right, moving on here. I'm taking too long on movies. All right, this is... Um, let me see here. This is all the Turtles films. And I, you know, I didn't grow up on the Turtles films. I did recently see the first one. And, uh, you know, I thought it was pretty good. But it's nothing I have nostalgic uh, memories about. So, I don't know. I am interested in checking out the second one. Because I used to be a fan of Vanilla Ice. And uh, I think it's going to be funny that Vanilla Ice is actually performing in it. All right. Next up here, I remember when this first came out, we saw this at the theater, and uh, it was like, it was pretty epic for the time that they were able to simulate all this, this these tornadoes and make it look so realistic. Uh, really cool shit, man. And this is from the producers of Jurassic Park and the director of Speed. Who directed Speed? Jan Day... Bunt? I don't know. Never heard of him. Uh huh. Bill Paxton. Good shit. I grew up on Transformers, and this is Transformers the movie. 
Can't go wrong with that. All day, every day. All right, this is a buck twenty-five bush pickup that I've, I've yet to see. The winds were kind of taken out of my sails. I had a subscriber comment. You can't win them all, PWM. Basically commenting on me picking this up. So it's not supposed to be very good. Um, I grew up on Goldie Hawn, so I don't know. I felt like it might be a cool flick to watch, but probably not. Is Goldie Hawn a stripper in this? I'm not sure. Why am I thinking she's a stripper? I don't know. I don't know what she does. She's a single parent, so she might have to do some things that she doesn't want to do to raise him. Maybe that's why I'm thinking about it. All right, we have a cool four movie pack here. Brewster's Millions Classic. Car Wash, believe it or not, I've never seen. I absolutely love Bustin' Loose. I think it's in Bustin' Loose where I've often said my favorite two guys together on screen as far as like from a comedy standpoint is probably Richard Pryor and um, <coughs> excuse me, whoa, what's the guy's name, um, I can't think of his name. Wait, he's not in Bustin' Loose? That can't be right. Maybe I'm thinking of a different movie. Let me see if he's in it. No, his picture's not in any of this stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking about a different movie. Anyway, uh, yeah, Bustin' Loose classic. I've not seen Car Wash. Brewster's Million, I absolutely love. Rest in peace, John Candy. And then you have um, Which Way Is Up. I don't even remember that film. Sure, I've seen it though. All right, we got the three Friday films here. I think that four pack had three Friday films on there, so that's kind of uh, something I don't necessarily need. All right, very uh, interesting, uh, polarizing film right here, Gummo. And this was, um, it says from the creator of Kids. I think Kids was directed by Stanley Clark, but it was written by Harmony Corinne. And, um, and yeah, I think Corinne directed this one, though. Yeah, he wrote Kids, which is a classic. If you guys have not seen Kids, Kids is like, when you're watching it, you really feel like you're watching like something that's really happening. Happening. It's cl it's the closest thing to like a documentary that's not a documentary that I've ever seen, and uh, it tackles the subject of kids doing drugs, but also AIDS. In one of the first films that I've seen that, and um, this one is, yeah, he wrote the screenplay for kids. This one's like there's a there's a, a tornado that hits like this small town. And it devastates the town. And it's the aftermath of this tornado and these poor white kids living in this area. Where is it at? Where is the area that they live in? It's not really saying it. But yeah, really interesting uh, character study. Gummo, check it out probably worth a few few dollars I imagine all right now golly we got like five more boxes to go through and I'm just barely getting through one box let me just shut up stop talking so much all right let's run through these real quick man I got a lot of multi-packs here I've never even opened this one we have the animal Deuce Bigelow love Deuce Bigelow Joe Dirt love it we have the Masters of Dis or the Master of Disguise. I've not seen that yet. House Bunny or the House Bunny, and then we have B the Bench Warmers. And then the OG Transformer cartoons here. We have Season Two, Part One. All right.
Now I consider this a classic, Napoleon Dynamite. Getting his groove on there. Pretty cool lenticular, you can see that good. I literally could not stop doing this, this is so fun. All right, that's enough of that. Grow up, PWM, you gotta grow up. All right, let's take a little break. All right, box number two here. And by the way, you will see, there's a lot of backlog movies that I've not seen in my collection. There is a lot of movies too that I wouldn't necessarily pick up that I was sent to by, by friends of mine. But, um, which speaking of, I think this is gonna be one of those films because I probably wouldn't pick this up. And that is a film that I have not seen before, Disturbing Behavior. It's got a young Katie Holmes in it. Know nothing about it. It says, part X-Files thriller, part screen chiller. Wow, this is a really powerful film as well here. Once Were Warriors. A family in crisis, a life in chaos. Nothing is more powerful than a mother's love. This is really, really a good flick, guys. Definitely seek this one out. Um, it's about a, uh, a family of, are they Samoans? They have some kind of Indian background, I think. And uh, the husband is super abusive to the mother and they're raising kids. And uh, you know, she's gotta protect herself from this, this maniac and also protect her kids from him. And uh, you know, every night they're partying and drinking and things get out of hand. But she's a good mom. She's just, uh, you know, she's just kind of struggling. But um, definitely highly recommend. This is a PWM recommendation, recommendation for sure. Check it out. Once We're Warriors. All right. Uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's who I was thinking about right here. With... Um, with Richard Pryor, uh, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor are so effing good together. I thought he was in Bustin' Loose, but I must be thinking of another movie. All right, now we have, this was sent to me by a buddy of mine. We have Alien from LA and Morons from Outer Space. All right, I've never seen a movie with Steve Austin before and uh we got four of them here hunt to kill the stranger the package and maximum conviction all right this is a good revenge flick that probably not a lot of you have checked out i would recommend this one And oh yeah, this is a very interesting movie here. Uh, very weird film too. A new kind of martial arts combat. The skill of gymnastics. The kill of karate. Well yeah, this guy's like a, a uh, an Olympic gymnast, but he also knows this, uh, what is it called? Well yeah, what, what do you mean what is it called? It's called, it's Jim Kata. He knows this like, fighting style called Jim Cotta race through the swamps climb a burning rope dangle above raging rapids brave fierce hand-to-hand -hand smackdowns and always be wary of the buried spears and plunging blades of attacking ninjas surviving the unsurvivable it's part of the game uh, gymnastics champion Kurt Thomas portrays Jonathan Cabot, an American who travels to a remote... I'm not going to read the whole thing, but anyway, um, 
The bad guy in this is Richard Norton. I love Richard Norton as a baddie. Really good in this film. And uh, yeah, definitely recommend that one. Another movie a buddy sent me. I have not, I just barely watched this like a year ago or maybe even less than a year ago for the first time. I've talked about it before. Like throughout the years, in the last decade, I've only seen like his Tybo exercise movies at Goodwill. I've never seen, I never knew that he was a movie star until the last like few years. And uh, he's in a lot of really good shit. And uh, this is definitely one of the best movies that he's in, Talons of, of the Eagle. And uh, this has our boy, uh, let me see, Matthias Hughes in it, in the back there. Survival of the Fittest. Definitely top five or top 10 depending on my mood th that day, as far as gang or hood films are concerned. Blood in, blood out. Absolutely amazing. All right, next up we have Nick Cage and Ghost Rider. I just saw that in the last uh, year. Pretty good, nothing too spectacular. Then we have uh, Michael Dudikoff in American Ninja 2 and American Ninja 3. Classic ninja shit. This is a, a really like a tough subject matter, uh, this film, but I feel like Kevin Bacon gives one of his best acting performances of all time, The Woodsman. I think most deaf is the... Uh, the police officer that's assigned to him or is watching him after he gets out of jail, something happened with him and a minor, and uh, most deaf is like coming over to his house and harassing him as he should. Yeah, most deaf. He's got a lot of good actors, in, a lot of good uh, acting in this. Benjamin Bratt's in this. He's got Eve in this as well, another rapper. Uh, Kira Sedwick is really good in this as Kevin Bacon's girlfriend. Yeah, not an easy subject matter to watch for sure. All right, moving on here. We need to start racing through this. This is a classic film right here. I grew up on this. Remo Williams, man. Love this shit. It's so hilarious that the old Oriental guy in this was like a young guy dressed up in, uh, in costume. I think that was a story on that. This has got such great, like, Statue of Liberty stunt sequences. And, uh, yeah, man, one of the better action films of all time, for sure. All right, we have Black Thunder. Speaking of Richard Norton, I do not believe I've seen this one yet. And now that Richard Norton's in it, I gotta check it out. Michael Dudikoff in Black Thunder. The world's most powerful jet fighters. It, jet fighter is in enemy hands. Only one man can steal it back. See, I was thinking that this was another film that had our boy. Let me make sure it doesn't have our boy. No, he's. I think Michael Dudikoff's in two similar films. Definitely need to check that one out. All right, man, uh, this is a really, uh, really hard to watch film, at least the end of it, man. Uh, Bob Fosse's Star 80, and it's about this beautiful playboy uh, playmate, what was her name in real life? Uh, Dorothy Stratton. You can watch her, like, if you go on YouTube, you can just, just put Dorothy Stratton in and, like, Johnny Carson. And you'll see how beautiful she is sitting next to Johnny Carson talking to him. And um, she was such a gorgeous girl. And the lady that plays her in this movie, it plays her so good. Uh, Mariel Hemingway. Man, Mariel Hemingway is a fox. 
But, um, and her boyfriend, Eric Roberts, is the one. So, in real life, her boyfriend kills her. Sorry about that. Spoiler. And, um, Eric Roberts plays her boyfriend. And he does a really good acting performance in this. I'd highly recommend this. Man. It's, it's, it's really good, but hard to watch. Uh, Castle Rock from J, uh, Stephen King and J.J. Abrams. I've never seen it. Never watched it. Is this a, uh, TV series? I believe so. All right. I love everything Ice-T. Ice-T actually, Ice-T has no acting range. He's the same guy in every effing film, and I think I love him for it. Uh, this is Body Count. And, um, is this the one with, uh, Zeus from Friday? I'm trying to remember. It's hard to keep. Yeah. T uh, Tommy Tiny Lister's in this one. It's not that good, but, uh, it's still, it's still fun. And of course, Alyssa Milano's in this. They're robbing like this mansion or something like that. And Tony Lister... Zeus is with Ice T, and Ice T's like treating him like a bitch. And uh, let me see, it's got a really convoluted plot, and I'm gonna go into it. All right, next up here, I've never even opened this one. I do like Richard Harris, and uh, these are two old like Western style films: Deadly, The Deadly Trackers, and Man in the Wilderness. Wilderness. I'm losing the capability of talking, guys. All right, I think this is like a buck twenty-five bush pickup. And uh, who doesn't love Mario Van Peebles? Shout out to um, Jaws Four, right? Uh, let me put these back. I can't believe we're on box two. This is taking forever. Oh, look, this is a movie that I was thinking of right here. We're talking about that other Michael Dudikoff movie. Oh, this one doesn't have Michael Dudikoff in it, does it? Let me see. Oh, no, it doesn't. I don't know why I was thinking that. But uh, this is the other movie I was thinking of, Act of Stealth. It's got our boy Fred Williamson in it. And yeah, one of the Baldwin brothers. Uh, yeah, Daniel Baldwin. This is a Fred Olin Ray film, guys. Supposed to be pretty good. Can't wait to check that one out. Just watched Highlander for the first time in the last year or so. And uh, yeah, man, big fan of it. Can't wait to see Highlander 2. This is a movie that I picked up recently from Goodwill. Director uh, Bong Joon-ho, who directed uh, one of my favorite creature features, The Host brings us a movie called Mother. And, uh, yeah, man, I heard good stuff about this one. Need to check that out very soon. Four-pack here. We have uh, Hard to Kill, classic. Um, Out for Justice, would that be considered a classic? We have Exit Wounds with DMX, and we have On Deadly Ground, not so much of a classic. Still factory sealed. And then we have Steven Seagal five film collection. These are all Steven Seagal like dubbed voices. Only fighting from waist up. Sitting in a chair beating up people. Type of films here. We have Attrition. Driven to Kill. Kill Switch. Mercenary for Justice. Today You Die. Post 2000. Crapola, guys. Somehow I thought it was a good idea to collect, collect Steven Seagal post-2000 shit. Oh, wait. I haven't even gone over this stuff yet. What am I doing? I'm losing my mind. All right. One of the best westerns in the last 20 years. When did this come out? 
I'll never find it. I'm sticking to the 20 year thing. But yeah, man, really good, man. Um, what can I say, man? The acting is amazing in this. Uh, the la the final uh, chapter in this film is incredible. Clint Eastwood is a man. I think he's like 90 years old now. Directed so many films, starred in so many classic movies. All right, we have, speaking of classic movies, we have The Godfather 3 Movie Collection. <laughs> oh, my God. We have uh, David Bradley and Expect to Die. This movie's so bad that it's probably good. It has something to do with, like, uh, a video game or something. I love David Bradley. And it ha of course, it has Billy. Uh, no, it didn't have Billy. It has a lookalike Billy Blanks that I don't even know. Let me read my notes back here from from a while back. Let me see. Is Billy Blanks in this? No, he cannot be in this. Jam Jalal Miri's in this, which I'm not a big fan of. I don't know how he's in so many of these good these. Uh, films with these great action stars but somehow he shows up this is really bad but it's funny i love these cases man i almost wish the ps1 would have had games released in these in these style cases all right i talked a lot of shit about this movie when i first watched it but uh and it's got mr miyagi in it too so i gotta respect it man um Claude Van Damme gets his feet just really gaily massaged by uh, by the least likely person of all time. The guy from, uh, I'm not going to think of his name right now, but he's in Machete. And uh, he massages his feet so gay. It is absolutely hilarious, man. All right. This is a really good film right here, man. Visually, just a stunning movie. And, uh, yeah, man, good Russell Crowe, young Russell Crowe stuff. Heaven's Burning. I want to say this is an Australian film, 1997. And, um, yeah, man, I, re I really remember liking this one. Definitely check that one out, man. Cool cinematography and uh, really a great ending, if I remember correctly. All right, let's finish this box off real, real quick right now. Um, let me see. Brian Bosworth in Stone Cold. Good shit right here. Lance Hendrickson is a is the baddie in this one. Leader of a biker gang, and our boy um, Brian Bosworth goes undercover. He's just an ultimate badass in this film. He beats up this guy in a circle of men who's probably six foot eight, 450 pounds. He just knocks him the fuck out. Excuse my French. All right, Gary Daniels in a really fun movie here, Blood Moon. Really great buddy cop action flick starring Gary Daniels and Chuck Jeffries, which his whole thing is he acts like he's Eddie Murphy, talks like he's Eddie Murphy. It's so hilarious. And uh, I just love the final uh, act in this movie, but it was not done correctly. I have a better, um, I have a better end to this movie. There's a, at the end of the movie, he's trying to save, I think the, uh, he's trying to save two people, right? And, um, and there's a bomb, they're like on the top of a building and there's a bomb and it's about to detonate and he's like doing flying kicks, effing people up on the building, working his way towards them. And then I wanted him to do a flying kick and kick the bomb and the bomb to fly away from them and explode into air, but they did something different. They totally messed up. But other than that, it's a really good film. Check it out. Inner, uh, Interceptor Force 2. 
I don't think I've even seen one. I don't remember this being that good, to be honest with you. And this has got my boy in it. Um, why am I forgetting his name? Claude Van Damme uh, bootleg dude. Let me see. I'm not going to stop until I find this, his name because that's going to drive me effing crazy. All right, let's put that right here because I'm going to to find his name when it pops up on uh, another uh, movie here. All right, we have, uh, I grew up on this shit, man. Nostalgia right here. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Rest in peace to Pee-wee Herman, man. He just passed away, I believe. Yeah, man, good shit. I remember seeing the, uh, I said this on my community page that no one ever checks out, but I remember watching this sitting on the floor in the living room. My mother and stepdad were on the couch and rolling on the floor in laughter and tears when I saw the scene where he's riding the bicycle trying to show off sticking his legs out trying to show off in front of these kids and then he falls off over the front of the uh, handlebars does a flip lands in the grass then he gets up and he's like I meant to do that I don't know why I thought that was so funny as a kid but it absolutely was hysterical to me alright um the girl on the train, I have no clue why I own this. No clue. One of the best action films of all time. We have John Woo's Hard Boiled. Then we have one of my favorite actors of all time in Blue Thunder, Roy Scheider. All right, that's it for box two. All right, box three here. We're going to start rolling through this guy, so I'm not moving fast enough. I spent like 15 minutes clearing memory on my phone, and we're going to run out again. Uh, this was sent to me in a package. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't pick it up. Southland Tales. Know nothing about it. Steven Skull, Belly of the Beast. Cyborg Soldier. This is actually pretty good, man. Rich Franklin. The UFC fighter. This is a cyborg in it, man. Love my love me some cyborg films. Uh, the Outer Limits. Fantastic Androids and Robots collection. I was really into cyborg films at the time, and I said, you know what? Let me uh, pick this one up. Okay, another copy of this. I'm gonna have to give some of these uh, dupes up. Now, um, this is going on the nostalgia shelf. And um, yeah, man, really uh, cool hockey flick. Patrick Swayze and Rob Lowe. And speaking of Patrick Swayze, we have Roadhouse. And. Uh, the lesser known Roadhouse 2. Another copy of Emmanuel. Uh, Locust. I need to give that away. Uh, movie that I picked up because all the great write ups on it. It's a foreign film, but I've never watched it. The Wounds. Okay, I get confused when it, when it comes to time travel movies. They just boggle my mind. This is the hardest to understand movie of all time, guys. I'm not saying it's a bad film. I'm just telling you, it is really hard to follow this film. The time travel stuff is so complicated that, um, I don't know. It says primer is the headiest, headiest. That means super friggin' hard to understand. Most singular science fiction movie since Kubrick made 2001. There is like some genius in this film where you're like, wow, is this a masterpiece or just really overly complicated and stupid, you know? 
I don't know, it falls right in, in between the two. And look what Roger Ebert says that I'm just noticing. Ingenious and fascinating. Thumbs up. So, I don't know, man. I'm almost scared to watch this again, but I'm probably going to have to do a rewatch on this one. It is super complicated. All right, the classic here. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Little box special edition here. All right, we have Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown. Who doesn't like Jackie Brown? Starship Troops. Starship Troopers Trilogy. I've never seen any of these movies, guys. I know. It's pretty shocking, isn't it? The PWM is effing up. All right, movies that I watched when I was young. Or this is one of the movies that I've watched. Uh, I don't believe I own Breaking, but I got Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. This is a really cool Criterion collection release here uh, on DVD, Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. I won't get into that. I was going to show that off, but what is that guy's name in Intercept Interceptor Force 2? cannot think of his name. It's driving me nuts. Oliver Gruner. Thank you. That time. Oliver Gruner is the bootleg John Claude Van Damme, but he's great. He's awesome. He's a great bootleg. All right, we have Wesley Snipes in Game of Death. I've not seen this yet. Both of these are uh, really cool flicks, man. I'm a big fan of Rudger Hauer. Omega Doom and Blind Fury. Great double feature right there. Really good. All right, we have uh, a movie that I've seen re recently when I was watching all these shark films. Not that this is a shark film. It's more of a, uh, what is that, a, uh, an electric eel? That's the, the 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 creature in this film that does does the killing. I think so. The deep. It's got a young Robert Shaw in it. Um, if you don't know, Robert Shaw was the uh, the shark hunter in the first Jaws film, and of course Nick Nolte. Classic Tupac shit right here above the rim. Amazing soundtrack. Great basketball action. And, uh, yeah, man, Tupac's great in it. It's got a lot of good actors in it, too. Leon is, is really good in it. Um, Steven Seagal and The Foreigner. Starship Troopers 3. Then I have two. I don't need those either. I need to put a box together and send it somebody's way because I got too many dupes I'm noticing. All right, I grew up on Knight Rider. There's no car that's better than than uh, than Kit, man. It's just the best car. It's it's the baddest car. Like if I had this car, I don't even know what I would do if I had that car. I would be like the coolest guy in the world. Can you imagine the PWM driving that car? I'm already really cool, but man, if I had that car probably be married to like a supermodel or something yeah man but uh who doesn't love david hasselhoff even when he's drunk on his ass and his daughters are recording him eating hamburgers off the floor you gotta love that guy he had a badass car all right uh steven seagal in attrition We have Oliver Gruner in Mars. I think this is pretty good if I remember correctly. 
It's been a while since I've seen that, but I think that's a good fl flick. Who's a bad guy in this? Eh, no one that I recognize. All right, now here's a Brian Bosworth movie that you might not know about. Everybody knows about Stone Cold, but we have One Man's Justice. Pretty good shit, man. Oh, did my camera fall down? Yeah, it did. What's up with that? But yeah, One Man's Justice. Good shit right here. I don't remember the story of this at all. I just know he's a badass. He's getting like revenge or something. His family might have got killed. Oh yeah, I think his family got killed in a gas station. Yeah, I think that's what it, what it is. And now he's seeking revenge against the gang. This came out in 1995. A film that I've still not seen with Emilio, Emilio Estevez, Mick Jagger, and Anthony Hopkins. Free Jack. I own that on Laserdisc as well. Alright. Let's get these last movies out of the way. And I think we're coming up on what? Why does this keep slipping? Right, I'm about to fi fix this in a second here. Let's go through these movies and I'll fix it. I think the AC is shaking the car so much. Uh, My Flesh and Blood. Really good uh, documentary, man. About this lady taking care of all these kids that have these rare diseases. And super sad film, but man. But really touching and poetic. Uh, yeah, beautiful film, man. Check it out for sure. Uh, Star Trek First Contact. I think this has a cyborg in it. That's why that was sent to me. A uh, movie that I've not seen, Dog Day Afternoon. I need to see Serpico and Dog Day Afternoon. It's got one of the baddest ass covers of all time. The movie's not as good as the cover, but uh, still fun shit, man. David Carradine. All right, we have Best of the Best 3. I'm a big fan of the Best of the Best series, but I've not seen this one. I think I've seen the first two. Well, I know I've seen the first one, of course, and the second one I've definitely seen, now that I think about it. All right, Animal is a horror film, so that's in the wrong place. This was sent to me, I don't think 50 cents, and really, I've never seen him in a good movie, to be honest with you. Gun. And then we have Body Heat, which is... Um, I want to say this is a Brian De Palmer film. Let me see. Or maybe I'm wrong. No, it says Lawrence Kas Kasdan. I don't know why I was thinking Brian De Palmer. Body Heat. I don't remember. I don't even know why I have it. I think someone sent that to me. All right, let's get all this stuff back in the box. And I'm going to fix the camera, I think. Readjust and let's go into box number four, right? All right, guys, just a heads up. I looked in the back seat. I have so many movies. I might have to make this into two parts. I won't even end it and say anything. It'll just, you know, it'll just end and then we'll move to the second one. But I'm gonna try to rush through it. We'll see what we can do here. I don't even know why I picked this up besides the fact that I'm a huge, I used to be a huge Michael Jackson fan. Uh, it's probably worth a little bit of money timeless next up we have uh, Conan the Complete Quest so I'm assuming this has yeah this has both movies on it the Barbarian and the Destroyer double feature here uh, Assassination and Messenger of Death Charles Bronson. This is a, uh, a series that I still have not watched. I need to go back to it. I think I watched the first few episodes and just procrastinated on it. But uh, Michael Dudikoff and Cobra. Next up we have uh, Ice-T teaming up with our boy uh, Tommy Tiny Lister again. And also Cool Mo D, Out Cold. Not very good, to be honest with you. All right, another John Woo film here, The Killer. 
good stuff. Amazing sword and sandal adventure right here, guys. Death Stalker 4. These are some of my favorite David Carradine films right here, man. And uh, in the second one, we have our boy, which is really cool. He teams up with, hopefully they say it on here. Well, David Pryor, I believe, directed both of these. So his brother was in the second one with uh, Carradine. And that's um, uh, Future Force and Future Zone. I love these films, man. Some of the best, like, post-apocalyptic, futuristic cop films. Really good shit. I read up on this that they said David Carradine was drunk during the making of this. Uh, Ted Pryor is uh, David Pryor's brother. He stars in the second one, or, or you know, next to David Carradine. In this film, David Carradine has like a power glove, like a Nintendo power glove that like shoots missiles. It is so badass. But you only get to see it like at the end of each movie. It's crazy. I'd be using that like throughout the movie. So badass. All right, so here, this is a really badass sword and sandals collection here. We have the warrior and the sorceress, barbarian queen, but then we also have death stalker, the original, and death stalker two. I'm a massive fan of the death stalker movies. And by the way, David Carradine is in the warrior and the sorceress. I just remember in those Death Stalker movies, it's the first time I've seen that where he kills people with the sword and has blood all over his sword, and then he just wipes the sword on his boot. Like, throughout the movie, he keeps on doing that, which is really gangster. But yeah, man, this is a badass set right here. Now I'm starting to wonder. I have Death Stalker, Death Stalker 2, and then I have 4. Why don't I have Death Stalker 3? Oh man, this is such a ridiculous movie. What, ha what happens in this movie is so unbelievable. Ice tea and air rage. I would buy that off of Ice tea in the name of the film alone. But this movie does not disappoint in this ridiculousness that uh, you will crack up laughing. Somehow they get on a, a, a plane. Somehow they're able to get onto a plane while it's flying somehow. And the way they do it is so stupid. Oh man, I gotta love it. Speaking of iced tea, we have On the Edge and Tracks. Really bad iced tea films, to be honest with you. I don't even know if I've seen Tracks, but I did see On the Edge. All right, this is a uh, Ultimate Sci-Fi Collection here. I think I bought this from Walmart. Now, the only one that I've seen... No, I'm sorry, I've seen two. I've seen Westworld and Soy, Soy, Soylent Green, I believe. I still need to see Logan's Run and The Omega Man. All right, so I drop stuff here. All right, more uh, Steven Seagal stuff here. This one has Ja Rule in it, Half Past Dead. Still have not opened this. This is a four movie set here, Black Vengeance. Just love the cover art on that. Found that at Walmart. I mean, I'm sorry, I found that at Goodwill. It has Black Fist, The Black Six, Black Gestapo, and Black Cobra 2. Are you effing kidding me? Definitely have to pop open that shit up soon here. OG Death Wish. And then we have a film um, 
by Gus Van Sant, which I like him. Uh, Gus Van Sant, I like him. He's done some good stuff. This is basically a, a story about Nirvana, or at least Kurt Cobain. And it's done in a very, like, artsy way. And, um, you know, I've seen people say this is a masterpiece, and I, other people hate on it. I was kind of in the middle with it. Um, uh, he did the film. I like the film that he did, Elephant. I think it was called Elephant, where it's about, it's kind of like based on the Columbine situation. But, um, yeah, like I said, really artistic. You know, some people say that Nirvana was, wasn't even a good band. They were kind of like a, an industry plant. And uh, when you really like look at their lyrics, it's not really that impressive. You know, if you really kind of put a microscope on the group, they're not really that impressive. But I, I don't know. I mean, back when they were big, I wasn't really into Nirvana. I wasn't even into that kind of music at the time. So I kind of got into them later on. Of course, you couldn't help it. If you watched MTV at all, they were all over MTV. But um, I don't know. I just, I've seen people uh, talk a lot of crap about Nirvana. All right, speaking of artistic, uh, this is a pretty heavy film, man. Uh, it's about abuse uh, of a child. And um, it's a film by Alexander Vartanoff bullet collector and uh it's a pretty deep movie man I, I i really enjoyed this man visually it's uh it's really nice to look at i think it's uh for the most part black and white but the colors pop the white and the black pop um and like i said it's about a kid that's kind of pushed to the limits he's just beaten up at school his his family's abusive to him it's a really sad movie but uh really cool release here in the clear case. All right, this is a buck twenty-five Bush pickup bubble. This, I think, this is the first movie that Steven, Steven uh, Soddenberg uh, made or directed. Some good shit, man. I enjoyed this one. I'm not gonna tell you what happens in it. All right, David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. If I watched this when I was young, I do not remember anything about it. I need to go back and check it out. All right, we have Stallone and Over the Top. Good shit. Four movie action pack right here, guys. We have Hard Target, Street Fighter, Sudden Death, and The Quest. Yeah, this is an incredible collection. My phone is definitely going to run out of memory. Let's see if we can at least get through. Oh, where are you? Hour and, hour and eight. Man, that's crazy. All right, Oliver Gruner and Velocity Trap. Dawn the Dragon Wilson and Cyber Tracker. It's also got Ring of Fire and Ring of Fire 3. Three, Lion Strike. Is it Ring of Fire, the sword film? Where they're using the swords like fencing? I can't remember now. Alright, Cyborg 2. I, I adore this film. Uh, you know, Cyborg is one of my, it's probably my favorite post apocalyptic film of all time. And I feel like this is a good sequel. Uh, Joe Lee is, uh, she's a great, uh, she's a, she's a cyborg in this film and she's really good in it. Jack Palace is the bad guy in the film. He's the baddie. He's so badass in this. Future beware. The soul is in the software. Of course, this had a underage Angelina Jolie in it, which is unfortunate, but Hollywood, you know, I don't even think they give a flying F back then. It's one of my favorite martial arts uh, tournament style films of all time. Best of the best. It's a tearjerker in the end of the film. Man. It's uh, 
really touching and uh, triumphant uh, ending. All right, next up here we have Lethal with our boy Frank Zagarino's in this and uh, starring Lorenzo Lamas. I remember enjoying this one, man. I thought it was some good shit. Deadly Force authorized. Oh, yeah. All right, next up here we have Jeff Wincott and Maria Ford in Future Fear. Gotta love that cover, man. Put fire on it, guns, and badasses, and you got one hell of a cover. All right, something that I've only seen in the last year or so, Battle Royale. Really good movie, man. Definitely enjoyed this one. It's one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies in the last 25 years. I think this was his top movie in the last 25 years. Whenever he did that, I can't remember what year he did that, but uh, yeah, personally one of his favorite movies of all time. All right, now. Oops. I'll mix shit up here. All right, Christopher Lambert, Night Moves. I've not seen that one yet. Believe it or not, one of PWM's favorite movies of all time. I feel like Flashdance is the equivalent to like Rocky in many aspects. And I love the, uh, the uh, what's her name? The chick that plays uh, Jennifer Beals, man. She's amazing. But uh, it's got one of the best final acts. I'm not going to say of all time, but I don't know. For whatever reason, like, I really like this movie. I don't know why. It's kind of like not PWM's style, so to say, but I don't know what to tell you, man. I love it. We have Upgrade. I have not seen this yet. I think this is kind of uh, where man becomes a machine. Artificial intelligence. Believe it or not, I've never seen Cradle to the Grave, Jet Li and DMX. All right, we have two film collection here. We have Legion with Rick Springfield, the rocker. I remember enjoying that one. And then uh, Total Reality, which I don't particularly remember. All right, I think the gun, the, th this rifle that he has in this game, the sniper rifle, is probably the best part of this movie. Uh, Dolph Lundgren. It's still a cool film, but, uh, you know, I like Dolph Lundgren in a lot of other movies than this one, but uh, definitely one of the best weapons of any action film I've ever seen. It's insanely badass. Cool shit, man. It's one of my favorite prison movies of all time, Fortress. Man, I absolutely adore this film. It's so good, and there's such a there's a scene in this movie that made me laugh so hard with uh, with Lambert's character when he had to swallow this. Uh, I, I would butcher it even talking about it, but whatever happens, it just made me laugh so much. And uh, I cannot wait to see this one again. It's like a futuristic prison that he's locked in, but you cannot contain. Christopher Lambert's badassery sooner or later he will escape and do his wrongs right and then I literally was so excited when I found out there was actually a sequel to the film which by the way is not as good as the first one but still pretty cool Fortress 2 re-entry so yeah you know, I talk about Ice-T being the same guy in every movie. Christopher Lambert is the same guy in every movie. But you gotta love him. All right, we're almost finished with this box. Everything's about to fall over here. All right, what do I got here? In Glorious Bastards 2, Hell's Heroes. It says on the back of it, it has Bridges to Hell... Apocalypse Mercenaries and Warbus 2 and Inglorious Bastards 2. 
It's got that many movies. Oh God, they're on one disc. That's a problem. All right, I need to hurry through this box here. Uh, Roy Scheider in Covert Assassin. I have not seen this one yet, but I love me some Roy Scheider. Next up is Tekken Kazuya's Revenge. Not something I would pick up, but uh, I think I was sent, sent that by someone. All right, um, triple feature with Claude Van Damme. We have Death Warrant, Cyborg, and Double Impact. All amazing films. Speaking of trilogies here, we have Direct Action, Retrograde, and Direct Contact with Dolph Lundgren. Uh, Urban Action Collection, Black, uh, Black Belt Jones, Black Samson, Hot Potato, and Three the Hard Way. A little black exploitation for you. And uh, some of my favorite Cyborg films of all time, Cyborg Soldier and Terminal Impact, which is a Cyborg Soldier 2. Uh, these star Brian Ganese and uh, we got Frank Zagarino as well, who's the star of the Project Shadow Chaser films, which is one of my favorite Cyborg franchises of all time. Now, we talked about Cyborg 1 and 2 earlier. Here is Cyborg 3. It's kind of like Cyborg 2 mixed with uh, The Wizard of Oz. And if you watch it, you'll know exactly what I mean. It's pretty hilarious. All right, that's it. Let me pause for the cause. All right, I can't believe I'm trying to do this in one video. Godzilla 2000, have not seen that yet. Under Siege with uh, Steven Seagal. Uh, Guy Ritchie film, Revolver, I've yet to see. Um, yeah, this is a really cool film right here. Christopher Lambert and Ice T, and this is basically like Battle Royale in this, uh, I think it's like this abandoned building where this gang leader invites all these, uh, all these gangsters to this, uh, one building, and then they have this big battle royale. There's, like, guns everywhere, and, um, really cool shit, man. Um, definitely highly recommend this one. This is an Albert Pune film. Rest in peace, Albert Pune. Um, one of my favorite Albert Pune movies. I really enjoyed this one. Good shit. All right, best of the best. Eric Roberts. Again, man, one of the best uh, tournament martial arts films of all time. Out of the Furnace. I think this is one of Kristen Bale's uh, best acting performances. Good stuff. Woody Harrelson's the bad guy. We have uh, Abraxas. With Jesse Ventura, I've not seen this one yet. Picked this up uh, fairly recently. Apparently, he's the guardian of the universe. It's probably some good shit. Uh, I've seen The Substitute and Part 2. Good stuff. I actually think I enjoyed 2 better than uh, the first one. So, looking forward to uh, Substitute 3 and 4 with Treat Williams. Another... Uh, Bong Jun Ho movie, Snowpiercer. This was good, man. Good stuff. I enjoyed this one. Saw that recently as well. All right, next up here we have in the cool case here, The Bad Pack. And this stars uh, Ralph Moeller, Robert Davi, and Roddy Piper. All right, DOA, Dead or Alive. This is fun, man. I thought this was a fun flick. But surprisingly, a lot better than I thought. Ninja Term Terminator, <laughs> really cool ni uh, ninja film. Uh, hilarious too, man. Super funny. Godfrey Ho directed this. So good. This is a movie that I saw like in the last couple of months and really enjoyed. Gunmen with Mario Van Peebles and uh, Christopher Lambert. So good, man. Check this one out. I give, I give this a high recommend. Yeah, PWM's highest recommend right here. You gotta check this one out. 
if you like Christopher Lambert and uh, Van Peebles, they're great together in it. It's one of the best westerns of all time, Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West. It's from 1968. We have uh, Black Sunday, which I've not seen yet. It's like a terrorist uh, film. Uh, most Wanted 10 Action Movies. Didn't this one have... Uh... Yeah, Deaden. Deaden's the one you gotta check out on this one. Really good shit. Check out Deaden if you pick this up. Bounty Hunters with Michael Dudikoff. Total Recall 2070. Mark for Death. This is probably the highest recommend I can give you on a movie that no one has effing seen, guys. I talk about this as much as I can. It reminds me very much of The Matrix, but it's got its own style to it, and that is called Storm. If you have not seen this movie, go out and order it off of Amazon right now. The PWM would not lie to you. I'm telling you, this is an incredible film that no one is talking about. Yes, you do have to read subtitles, but this film right here is so much fun that you will be totally all right with reading subtitles. All right, we have Pistol Whipped, Steven Seagal, probably horrible. Moving Target. Good shit. And then a really cool collection. It's got all the American Ninja movies, all five of them, all on separate disc. In the clear case. Amazing shit. Then we have the Missing in Action collection. Or all three of them. I don't think there was a fourth one, was there? Now here's another, This I guess this might have been the movie that I was thinking about. Let me see something here. Oh, this is just another copy or variation. I think we already covered this, right? Just a different DVD cover? Countermeasures? Pretty sure. And I feel like I showed you guys this as well, this four pack. So I have dupes of that as well. All right, moving on here. And when I run out of time, it's not going to tell me. This is going to run out. So that could be happening very soon here. All right. The Running Man with Schwarzenegger. The Double O Kid. I just picked this up because it has Corey Hammond. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Unbreakable. Good shit. Hurricane Smith. I enjoyed this one, but Action pa Action Paxson, Action Jackson is so badass, and I think they made this um, off of the success of Action Jackson, and it's not even close to as good as Action Jackson. It just misses the mark, unfortunately, because it does have fire and badassery on the cover. All right, one of my favorite sword and sandals films of all time, man, Don Coscarelli's The Beastmaster. Good shit, man. I was raised on that. Dennis Chop, Dennis Chopper, Dennis Hopper and Choke. Next to Ken, Swayze, Identity. Man, the first time we've ever witnessed Van Damme in Black Eagle. Even though Shokasugi was the star, for some reason he's on the cover. straight bullshit. Wow, I don't know how I'm navigating this. TNT Jackson and the Black Godfather. Black exploitation at its best or worst. Then we have Urban Action Cinema. 15 movies. Now this one has Black Cobra, Black Cobra 2, and Black Cobra 3. I don't even have to say the rest of the movies on there. That is amazing. 
By the way, if you've ever watched uh, Stallone in the movie Cobra, that's what this is. Black Cobra. It's a black guy playing Cobra role. All right, next up here we have Conan the Barbarian. I do like the artwork on that. We have a bootleg, uh, speaking of uh, Shokasugi, one of my favorite movies of all time, Pray for Death. Incredible film. Pick this up off of name alone because Kill Crew sounds so badass, but it wasn't really that good. And I've not seen Street Fighter. Uh, and I don't believe I've seen, seen Beyond Justice as well. All right, Chuck Norris in Invasion USA. It's about as cheesy and uh, as badass of a film you could watch. It's hokey, but it's definitely violent and uh, it's a great action film. It's got uh, one of my favorite baddies in this. Uh, what is his name? This is a Golan Globus production, so you know what you're getting with this shit, man. Richard Lynch, of course, is the baddie. All right, four pack here, quicksand, ticker, fall time, and beyond the law. And we have a movie, William Defoe is one of my favorite actors of all time. This is factory sealed in the snap case. I hate snap cases. White Sands. Please hold. All right, I know this will be shocking and controversial, but, um... Steven Spielberg's first film, Duel. I kind of feel like this movie's a little bit overrated. I thought it was decent for what it was, but it didn't blow me away. All right, next up here we have uh, Johnny Depp in Dead Man. Very interesting film. I thought it was good stuff. Entertaining for sure. Uh, I picked this up recently, Man Board. This is just silly fun right here. I think it's like only like 55 minutes long in the movie. I'm sorry, no, it's 72 minutes long. But, uh, yeah, just not to be taken too seriously. Over the top, super cheesy, hokey, and uh, almost cartoonish. Bad special effects, but so bad it's good. Uh, next up here we have uh, Bug. Very interesting film. We're going to be doing a live stream, uh, I think it's September 29th or something like that. I should have, like, a panel on there with other people that have watched... Uh, a lot of uh, William Freakin film. R William Freakin died, obviously, recently. So rest in peace to William Freakin. And uh, speaking of William Freakin, a movie that I've... This, this is a first watch for me, like, literally in the past month. And has all of a sudden become one of my favorite films of all time. Sorcerer, guys. That's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, next up here, we have Shen Godzilla. I've not seen it. Uh, Three o'clock high. Watched that when I was younger. Started to watch it the other night, but uh, got distracted. I'll go back to it. It's supposed to be one of the best high school films of all time. All right, Steven uh, Seagal against the dark. Steven Seagal pistol whipped. Fire down below. Today you die. Flight of Fury, The Man Has No Shame, Kill Switch, Shadow Band. Wait, Out of Reach, The Foreigner, Black Dawn, Out for a Kill. We got one more box after this if we can get through this. Uh, one of my favorite collection uh, DVDs of our sets of all time, because uh, this has Shadow Chaser in it. It's hard to get Shadow Chaser in American release. So this is what you need to buy if you want to watch a badass cyborg film, one of my favorites of all time. Um, also has Stormtrooper in it, which I really enjoyed, and Cyber Vengeance uh, are a few of the highlights in this uh, Termination collection. Great shit, man. Uh, we have a steel case of Rambo trilogy. Speaking of trilogies, Mortal Kombat. 
It's got all three films. I just recently found out that there's a third uh, film. Well, it's really like a television series, uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy. So I'm interested in checking that one out because I'm a big fan of the first two. And... I was trying to collect... Uh, what was I trying to do with this? I don't even know why I picked this up, to be honest with you. I think because... Um, David Pryor, Ted Pryor, I was trying to pick up like all Ted Pryor films, but I think he just plays like a, uh, kind of like a side character in this, in, in Center of the Web. Also has Gang Wars with Coolio. I started to watch that, it's just horrible. And uh, Center, Center of the Web has uh, Davi in it as well, Robert Davi, so I don't know. Kind of a loose pick up there. Uh, next up here, we have Daniel Bernhardt in Future War. I remember enjoying this. Bernhardt was in Bloodsport, I think, 1, 2, and 3. It's got a 1.7 on... Yeah, I remember this now. This is actually uh, super cheesy, but I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. IMDb gave it like a 1.7, but... Uh, the former porn star, Tracy Lords, who actually became a pretty good actress over the years... Uh, this is a funny comedy, man. I actually enjoyed this one. Frostbite. Bullets and Bombs, or Bullets, Bombs, and Babes collection. This is the Andy Sidaris collection. I'm really bad at watching movies when they're on, like, single disc. I think this is on, like, two. No, I'm sorry. There's one, two. There's, like, three discs, but it's, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve movies. But I've only watched, I think, let me see, the Dallas Collection, or maybe I watched Savage Beach. I think it was Savage Beach. But all his movies are pretty similar. They have naked chicks and explosions and, uh, yeah, super over the top. I look forward to checking out the other movies in the collection for sure. Started watching this one, and I enjoyed it. I don't know why I got distracted on this one, because it had a really cool... Uh, I don't know, I'll probably watch the first 30 minutes of it, The Green Knight. Need to go back and check it out. All right, let me put this in there. All right, uh, Ron Martini films. He's like a badass. He's like the best, one of the best tournament fighters of all time uh, in karate. And, uh, let me see. The first film is Omega Cop. Come on, these. I hate these skinny plastic uh, DVD cases, man. Unfortunately, please give me a Blu-ray release. One of these boutique labels. Give us both of these films because they're really fun. Karate Cop is the second one. Now, this has David Carradine in it, but he's in there for like five minutes. But, uh, yeah, Mancini's a badass in these films. Super over the top. Good shit. Nice to see a sequel come out for Omega Cop. And uh, I think, oh yeah, Adam West from the original Batman is in this friggin' film, which I thought was so funny. All right. All right, District B-13. This is really fun, man. Overlooked uh, film right here. Great action flick. And then we have a four film collection here. Men of War, Mask of Death, Best of the Best Three, and Driven to Kill. Undisputed with Ving Rhames and uh, Wesley Snipes. I remember checking that out, it's really good. I think this is a, uh, yeah, it's a Walter Hill film. You know Walter Hill, man, he makes great movies. Active Stealth, I think that's a dupe, right? I mentioned that one earlier. Max Havoc, never heard of it. Uh, stolen Direct Action, The Circuit, and Rampart. Rumblefish, uh, Francis Ford Coppola. I've just seen this in the past uh, year or so. Good shit. Then we have a movie that I've watched in the last month or so, Shadow Hours. I'm a big fan of Peter Weller. 
And uh, yeah, enjoy this one. All right, last box, guys. Let's see if we can do it before I uh, run out of time here. I'm sure I only got like a few minutes left. 10 minutes max. Uh, Infernal Affairs. I can't remember what my subscriber told me about this one. He said uh, this was redone. Uh, a remake of this movie came out. I'm stepping on the brake. I'm, I'm probably causing a dashboard to make noises. Um, what movie would... Somebody redid this movie because it was so badass. And I can't remember off the top of my head. But this is supposed to be really good. Infernal Affairs. Got great write-ups on it. Uh, the City of Violence. Redeemer. Universal Soldier Regeneration. I've not seen that one yet. Eric Roberts and Freefall. And look, it's got uh, Jeff Fahey in it. And it's also got my boy... Why am I forgetting his name? He's not even mentioned on this. It's very weird. Anyway, haven't checked that out yet. And uh, what else do we have here? The Last Dragon. Into the Sun. Submerged. I can't believe how many movies he made. Maximum Conviction. Then a four-pack uh, Bounty Hunters. Michael Dudikoff, Bounty Hunters 2. Hidden Assassin and Men of War with Dolph Lundgren. We have Rudger Hauer and Beyond Justice. And we have a sci-fi four-film collection, Last Lives, Firehead, uh, Equations, and Leeches. Hard Target 2. We have Tiger Claws 2, which I don't even think I've seen yet, and Tiger Claws 3. I definitely need to check these out soon. Uh, Claude Van Damme, Alien Uprising, JCVD, and Pound of Flesh, all post-2000. Probably trash, I imagine. Uh, Ninja Assassin. Again, I get sent a lot of this stuff. I probably wouldn't have picked that up, but I did hear, hear good things about that one. Uh, Terminate, Terminator, Terminator Salvation. I've only seen like the first three Terminator films. Uh, Locked and Loaded. We have uh, Attack Force, The Point Men. The Hunt for Eagle One and Walking Tall. And then another Universal film here, Universal Soldier The Return. Next up we have Mandrill. Undisputed Three Redemption. I feel like that's a dupe for me. Those in there. Uh, let's go through all these skinny cases. I picked up these cases because sometimes they're really scratched up and I wanted to have extras or they get cracked. The Girl Next Door. Deadly Drifter. The Inside Man. The King's Guard. Uh, Power, Passion, and Murder. One-Eyed Jacks, that one's factory sealed, Marlon Brando. Uh, Big City Blues with Burt Reynolds. And Detectives. No clue on that one. All right, can we make it before we run out of time? Run, Lola, Run. Uh, I'm not going to mention all these movies. Uh, eight movie collection here. Nothing too insane on there. Uh, Super Spy, Highlander 2, and you check that one out. And these are just uh, Criterion films that I picked up for the hell of it. I know nothing about them. Night and Fog, and The Most Dangerous Game. Next up, Death Toll. Terrible movie. It's got Lou Diamond Phillips, so I'm a big fan of his, but it's not a good movie. Uh, watched this when I was younger, so nostalgia here, Bad Influence, Wake of Death, Deadly Impact with Fred Williamson and Bo Sevenson, Factory Sealed, and then we have a four-pack, Pure Country, Macon County Line, I enjoyed Macon County Line, 
uh, the Ballard, the Ballard of Little Joe, and then we have Honeysuckle Rose with uh, Willie Nelson. Uh, Shadow Warriors. I need to check this one out. It's got Carl Weathers and Hulk Hogan. Definitely need to check this one out soon. Next up, Murder Machine 3 DVD, 3 DVD set. Murder Cycle, love the name. Crash and Burn, I've seen that. I think I've seen Robot Wars as well. Uh, action, action uh, pack here. Uh, oh, I didn't realize that Hired to Kill is actually on this pack that Tyler had sent me. That's interesting, I have the Blu-ray of that. Cold Harvest with uh, Gary Daniels, and we have Trader's Heart. And then also Gary Daniels in City of Fear. Next up, it's good to be alive. Know nothing about that. We're almost done, guys, and I will let you go. Oblivion. Four movie Steven Seagal collection. Mercenary for Justice, Driven to Kill, Today You Die, and something else with st some sticker uh, stickers on it. Space Truckers, Ancient Empire, my voice is cracking, I've been talking so much, Assassination, or Assassin X with Oliver Gruner, uh, Triple Features, Serpico, Eternal Affairs, and Narc. Then we have Van Damme, Derailed. And then a movie my stepdad was telling me about uh, when we were on vacation, Knowing with Nicolas Cage. It's supposed to be a really deep uh, movie. So I figured I'd check it out. I thought my stepdad's a very deep guy, but you know, who knows? Might be good. Uh, next up, The Russian Specialist. I don't know why I paused there. And then last of the movies here, we have a double, fe a double feature, The Never Ending Story and The Never Ending Story 2. All right, guys, that is it. I'm the PWM, the physical media Mac, and this was my 2023 non-horror DVD collection video. Thanks for checking out the video. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Good luck out there finding whatever physical media that you are looking for, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.